Hello folks, hello one and all, welcome back to New Cats on the Block, the next episode, just like Dr. Dre. We are back in NCAA 04 with our Northwestern Wildcats Dynasty mode. We are looking to play in the Capital One Bowl for the second straight year. Last year we beat the Alabama Crimson Tide in dominant fashion uh, to win our second bowl game as coach of the Wildcats. And this year we are welcoming, uh, or I guess facing the Ole Miss Rebels uh, who come into this game ranked 15th. So you saw on the pregame screen how each team kind of stacks up against one another. It should be a pretty even game, but I think we are the better team technically uh, going into this matchup. I think last year we were really like neck and neck. Like Alabama was like right freaking there with us. Uh, and Ole Miss isn't too far behind, but I just as far as the country is concerned, I think we are uh, the favored team uh, in this matchup. So, in case you're keeping track at home, in case you're not, I am. I have a notes app on my phone that sits right beside me. It's my cheat sheet, my Excel spreadsheet uh, that I'm reading all these stats off of. This is uh, our sixth bowl game um, in in our coaching time. We haven't been, we've only, there's been two seasons we haven't made it to a bowl game. That was our first season uh, without our own guys. Uh, and then 2008, we missed uh, a bowl. So this is our second straight bowl appearance, our second straight Capital One bowl appearance, and we're hoping, looking to make it our third straight bowl win. Uh, so we're going to cut ahead into the first quarter. Ole Miss is looking at a third and pretty long situation. What can they do? Is our quarterback's going to drop back, skin over his options. He's got all day to throw and lobs that one up, and he finds a man, but he cannot haul it in as we have some good pressure uh, on the receiver to break that pass up. And so that is going to bring up a fourth down for the Ole Miss Rebels. They're going to bring up the special teams unit, a quite a long field goal, uh, but their kicker's got the leg forward in these in this pretty gross and gray uh, rendition of the Capital One Bowl down here in Orlando, Florida. It does get pretty rainy and gross down there sometimes, so makes sense. Uh, third down situation for your Northwestern Wildcats as a quarterback's going to drop back and throw it into an absolute mess of coverage, uh, and that one is just not, it's not going to happen. There was about 17 guys there. So we're going to bring out our kicker here to try and polish off this drive here, kicking from, our, our, from Ole Miss's 20, and we can answer back Ole Miss's field goal here and not this one up. So it's a close one so far. Is this going to be a nail-biter to the finish? I hope not. I just want another bowl victory. Another third and short situation for your Wildcat offense. The quarterback's going to drop back, and he wants all that one, throws it up in double coverage, and there's no chance of that one being completed as Ole Miss's defenders are all over that one. So a fourth and four, we're going to bring out the special teams again, and he's going to send this one up, kicking it from a little bit further, but he still has the leg. So... I believe that was coming off of a turnover, an Ole Miss turnover, because we failed to move the ball. Um, we went three and out off of that. So, But we did capitalize getting three points. So Ole Miss now on first and ten. They're going to throw another pick or just make another turnover, and there's no one in front of our defender, and he's going to take that one all the way for a touchdown. And there you see the number right there. Ole Miss already with three turnovers in this football game. Uh, but our offense is kind of pedestrian. they got to do a little bit something here as we ride a 10-point lead here in the second half. And the pressure it gets to our quarterback. And did you see that popped up? A scoop and score technically, or is that a pick? I, I don't know. The, the ball definitely was not going forward, so that is a fumble. But Ole Miss is able to capitalize on a quick sack, a quick strip sack. And there you'll see here, boom, the ball's popped up and right into that linebacker's hands. And he's just going to walk right on into the end zone about 10, 15 yards into the end zone uh, to get his team right back into this game. So, But we have a third and short situation deep in the red zone here. We're going to try and punch it in. Uh, I don't know what our quarterback thought he was doing, but there was no room, no space uh, for him to really do anything. But uh, they're always going to make him try to run. So we're going to bring out our special teams unit yet again for another field goal and take a six-point lead over Ole Miss. And this is dangerous, man. You don't want a six-point lead. You want a seven-point lead because all they got to do is freaking score. And they can get it. And there they are in a prime position in our red zone. Second and nine for Ole Miss. Can they punch it in here? They got plenty of time. Can they do it? And he finds a man on a nice slant right across the middle, and he can haul that one in under pressure. And now Ole Miss has the tying touchdown, but can they net the go ahead point after attempt uh, to hold one point over our heads? late in this bowl game and they can so we have one last opportunity it's third and eight we need it here we only got a minute left to go and boom what were you doing what did you see is my question what did you see you're a junior senior and you couldn't read that you didn't see that 
Oh my god. I mean, I think I made just as bad of picks when I played the first season, but still, man, come on. The CPU's just, just hosing me like that. Maybe the, maybe this is because of the Michigan game. Maybe maybe that's what they, they just they weren't gonna bail me out again after that. Like, nah, nah, you've got enough. You're gonna you're gonna lose this one, buddy. So we hand the ball right over to Ole Miss. Fortunately, a running back is able to stop the pick six, but uh, we do lose this game against Ole Miss by a single point. So Ole Miss comes into this one and upsets us. I mean, they had the better record, uh, I'm guessing, because of their SEC conference schedule. Remember, Alabama had the extra game that they played last year. They were 7-6. and six, We were 7-5. and five. So uh, Ole Miss technically, I guess, better, finishes with the better record at 11-3, and three, sending us to 9-4, and four, and we lose our fourth bowl game of six so we are two and four uh in bowl play uh and that is that is not good we got to get a little bit better with our bowl record if we want to hold our job and have it for a very long time so you can see just kind of the score right now it's gross Ole Miss converted one third down the entire game we only converted three the turnovers were freaking disgusting 10 Oh, God. I'm guessing it's because it was rainy, but I mean, still, dude, that's just inexcusable. Our offense did absolutely nothing. And I will show you our QB with a nice 62.3 rating in this game. He's a second team All American and just did absolutely nothing under center. He was just absolutely terrible. I just, I don't. It hurts my feelings to see that kind of thing. So, especially when I see all these All American things pop up as I'm flipping through the names, just to see all that, to see our good season. We had a really just shocking kind of season. We beat guys that we shouldn't have lost games that I kind of feel like we could have won, but it didn't matter. Uh, we come up empty handed. So, moving ahead now, looking over the results of the rest of the bowl slate now, uh, coming through all of our small ones here. Keep your eyes peeled for the Big Ten, see how they did. If anything at all, uh, as we look through, dang, SMU, a team that we absolutely blew out, ended up finishing 10-3. and three. Can you guys believe that? That is kind of nuts. Uh, it's kind of like in our first year when we beat Air Force 7-3 to three and they finished off like 11-2. and two. Like, Just gross. Uh, and speaking of Air Force, they do finish 12-1, and one, another dominant season for them. Are you really surprised? Because I'm not. Uh, Michigan ends up winning their bowl game. Uh, I guess they uh, came out just okay after uh, getting creamed by us. So that's good to see. Um Heading now into our big bowls, and Oklahoma is back in the BCS championship, winning the Fiesta Bowl over Louisville, uh, absolutely dominating them. And so that is Oklahoma's third straight national title appearance, man. Third straight, and it is their second of three. So, like, that is, I mean, that's kind of crazy. And in case you're keeping track, uh, that is Louisville's second appearance uh, in five years. So they were in it in 2005, and they come back in 2010. So good for them. I'll give them props. <laughs> they at least played for one. We have not played for one yet. And so uh, second team All-American, we got quite a few uh, selections here. Clinton Sprague, our quarterback, has a pretty good year. 34 freaking touchdowns. That's what happens when you put up, uh, put the passing up to 60%. You're going to get 34 touchdowns. And he didn't have that many picks. Not only did they match up the amount of picks, but no, he didn't have that many. Or, or he did, but just didn't match the 34 uh, touchdowns. So we will take that. I mean, we also have a second-team All-American receiver, so we are up to two right now. We are looking pretty nice. I'm taking that, bro. We are looking good. And then we close things off with our kicker, who's also getting a second-team All-American selection after really boosting his production from last year, posting an 86% uh, uh, percentage. Completion percentage, uh, if we can call it that. <laughs> um, but uh, a good season from our kicker. I was just talking about last video. It never makes your kicker good, but we have a good one there. So Wisconsin and Ohio State, two teams that both kind of embarrassed us this year, sit above us in the Big Ten standings, and we sit above Michigan and Iowa and Penn State, who all have similar records to us. And Penn State must have won out because, remember, they were 6-4 and four when we beat them. So Michigan State closes out the caboose with a pretty disastrous season. Jeez, rough. One win. <laughs> Michigan State always is bad in, the, in these games. I don't know why. They just never come back good again. You know what I mean? And like Michigan State, they ended up being good in real life eventually. You know what I mean? Just did them dirty. So, Clinton Sprague, again, our quarterback split some time, but Clinton Sprague has a majority of the numbers here. He played a majority of the season. Uh, almost 20 picks is gross. 55% completion percentage still just cannot get that number to go up. Um, uh, from our run game here, uh, Travis uh, – is that Travis or is it Traveris? Givens? I don't know how they would say that. Uh, has 100, 851 yards on the ground with just six TDs, and there's really not much going on from the rest of our run game, which is by design. We do not want to run the football, dude. It is just, it's a dangerous game, and I hate playing it. I hate running the football. Uh, 
or relying on running the football in this game and scheming for that. I just, I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, receiving wise, we still only have one thousand yard receiver, but this time it is a convincing thousand yard receiver. He's got thirteen hundred yards and thirteen touchdowns. Uh, really solid season from Weber, our top guy. Uh, he definitely earned that All American selection. Uh, Matt Sparks has a freaking amazing year. Just ramps up the production, minimizes the sacks. That's what you love to see. But no one else really has that level of production as it seems. Pretty decent seasons, except for uh, Antoine Walker. He has a pretty bad year. In his first year, he finally gets to start, and he has a pretty terrible year. So, um, other than that, there's not much left on the line. Talk about uh, Derek Hooper leads the defense, like, just leaps and bounds and tackles. I mean, this is kind of bad, dude. Our defense, I guess, just wasn't that effective. I don't know, man. Because the next, the fall off to 68 from 86 is just gross, dude. Gross. Uh, Beckford came in. Well, here's Dan Harden, remember, our All-American last year. He had a just crazy down year. From last year, which is awful. You hate to see that. LaShawn Logan had a great year compared to his previous few seasons. Uh, Beckford l- looks like he leads the team in TFLs, which is crazy. And then Jason Hackett, our middle linebacker, has like just a. Yeesh. I mean, look at that. Do you see that up and down, those pits and valleys? I don't know what that is. Maybe it's because every other year we're, we're replacing them with someone else, like someone younger who's better. I don't know. But. I hate to see that dropping from 90, 90 plus tackles uh, down to, to almost forty tackles. I mean, just like half that production. I just I I, I don't know what that is, you know. But uh, our kicker has a great year as well, and there's not much else really to to look at as far as players are concerned. But you know, I like seeing the kick returns. I like to see if we get a touchdown. You know what I mean? Kick return TDs. They they're nice. I like them. I think they're cool, man. I think they're all right. So let's see how the team ranked here. Offense is looking a whole lot better. Even our rushing attack moved up to 90th. We were 106th last year. Still awful, mind you. (laughs) Still terrible, but just a little bit better, even though we're not even focused on it. So I'd like to see that. Um, But otherwise, you know, our passing game efficiency and stuff was freaking cool. It's really up there. It's really good. Red zone field goals. I mean, hey, second in the nation red zone field goals. We were really churning up the points uh, if we were getting in the red zone. We were not walking away without our three uh, and our kicker ensured that. On defense, we're kind of all over the place again. Uh, really just nothing nothing super crazy. In the previous seasons that we've done really well, it's the efficiency with, like, getting the ball back, <laughs> like picks and fumbles. Like, that's really where we excel because our quarterback always throws 20 picks a year, you know, 15 to 20 interceptions a year. So if our defense can capitalize and get us – the ball back pretty regularly, then uh, that's that's something we can rely on, <laughs> you know? Like, as long as we're getting opportunities, um, you know, with the ball again, even though we're giving it up, like, that's that's okay, I'll take that. So, uh, yeah, see, there you see turnover. Our turnover differential grows. It's bad. <laughs> we, we just drop back. We're bad. Uh, 25 total INTs. Just, just yeah, see? <laughs> like, we need the defense to really generate turnovers or else, like, that number's always going to be terrible. So... We're going to move ahead into the offseason now and look ahead to our very next season where I'm still looking to make that big push. I'm still waiting to get that big push. We had a similar season to last year, except we didn't walk over the bowl, so that sucks. But we did improve a game here, and I'm hoping that the slight incremental improvements will get us more of the blue chips that we're really looking for. Uh, We're losing a a good bit of guys, not as many high guys, but Clinton Sprague, our quarterback for the last several seasons, uh, he is leaving us, so... We're going to need to reload it. We're probably not even reload a quarterback because we probably have someone just lying in wait uh, for that. But look at this class, man. Look at this freaking recruiting class. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen, sixteen five stars. 16 freaking blue trip prospects, bro. We were all, we took 16% of the national top 100. Of course, we're number one in the nation. How are you even get like, we were fifth last year and we are first this year, man. That is our first, uh, first <laughs> recruiting class in the nation. We were 52nd just two seasons ago. And now we are first in the nation recruiting. I mean, even Ohio State can't touch that. The top of our conference can't touch that. If we do not turn the corner this year, I'm going to pop a blood vessel. Because there's no way we we do not come at least close in the country uh, with that kind of recruiting class. I mean, I think preseason rankings, we probably got to come in at like, what, two, three? Like, dude, like, number one. 16 freaking five-star recruits <laughs> like look at this and we still have like dudes on our team who are gonna get better like 
sophomores, juniors, some seniors heading into this year. We're going to get better. This team is going to be freaking loaded. I just, I know it is. I just, I can't believe we finally, uh, at least as far as recruiting is concerned, concerned, made that, that, that went over that hump because our, our highest classes to date in 2007, we, we finished eighth. And that we had a five and seven season off of that, and then uh, the year before we were tenth, uh, and that that's when we went eight and six and got our first bowl victory. So last year we finished fifth and we finished off nine and four. So I'm thinking this might be the year where like we might be able to turn that corner. You think? I'm gonna remain optimistic. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the video is coming to a close, so we will cover that uh, in the next video. Because uh, I'm excited now, dude. I, I'm just like, look at the team now. We have an 87 overall fullback, dude. You can't tell me nothing with an 87 overall fullback. Come on, dude. Uh, they're not a lot, not a ton of depth I, or consistency rather at a receiver position, but that's fine. Looking at the line here, um, it's nowhere near as high as I want it. You know, like still kind of low. But I think a lot of these guys are young too. So like, give it like two or three years, we will be playing for Natties every single freaking year. And no one will be able to say anything about it. We will be the most dominant team year in, year out. And I'm here for it. It's going to be Wildcat time, baby. And no one is going to be able to stop us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So looking at uh, the rest of our team, uh, everyone just consistently over the 80s and pushing 90 uh, is, is what, I, is what I, I aspire to. That's what I want. Uh, Rich Poker's finally... Uh, correcting this team, getting things where they need to be heading into the next season, which is, is posed to be a, a big one. So we still have a few All-Americans around the roster who are going to make uh, some big waves for us, I'm hoping. Like if uh, Jermel Weber can have another big year, that'd be pretty cool. You know, if we could get another All-American selection from a kicker, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> so... We're going to generate our schedule now and move ahead to our next season, the 2012 season uh, of this dynasty. Um, so hope to see you all in that video when we take on or just look ahead to our next season.